Do the cosmos signal and indicate things that are happening on Earth, or do they cause them? Do we have free will, or are our lives completely faded and determined by the cosmos? I'm going to answer this very big question in this video, and please keep in mind that this is a very personal question that each of us individually has to answer and make for our own lives. And it's a lifelong question that will take years to fully understand and grasp. But in this video, I want to talk about ancient Hellenistic astrology, Stoic philosophy, and why my studying and practicing zodiacal releasing has really changed my philosophy view on life and has brought more magic to my life as a result. Hey guys, it's me Helena. I am a traditional Hellenistic astrologer and astrocartographer and I specifically specialize in zodiacal releasing, an ancient timing technique that times the chapters of a person's life biography. I also specialize in astrocartography and if you would like to book a reading with me for either of the two, you can check out my website and my schedule down below and I would love to read for you. What I'm about to share with you might be a bit unsettling, and that's because a lot of my work and my passion is really in ancient techniques um, from 2nd century BC. I study Stoic philosophy, Valen's work, as well as I'm a huge fan of Chris Brennan's work and his courses and his, uh, his writing. And so a lot of what I'm about to share about fate and determinism and dates and specifically using the technique that I love and adore, zodiacal releasing, this might really be unsettling or change your view on what astrology is capable of. So first we have to answer the question of what is astrology? Astrology is the correlation between celestial bodies and earthly events. So it's a correlation. We notice things that are happening in the sky and we notice the patterns and really that's what astrology is. It's pattern synthesis. It's noticing and observing correlations between the cosmos and the events that are taking place here on earth. So what would that mean? What does that mean when we think about what astrology can do? Does it cause things? or does it signal things? And this is the great debate that a lot of philosophers and ancient astrologers have debated for centuries. There is causal and there's signal. Causal being the cosmos are causing everything to happen on earth. They are making things happen. That's the causal approach to looking at astrology. Then we have the signal approach, which is the planets aren't causing things to happen. It's merely signaling or indicating or showing you that it's happening on Earth. I like to personally follow this approach because I like the idea that the Mesopotamian scholars used a lot when they thought about astrology, which was the cosmos were like messengers. There was writing on the sky. There was this language written in the cosmos and the planets were acting as messengers to us here on earth to kind of, kind of give us indicators, kind of give us messages. I don't know about you, but I find that to be way more magical of an approach to viewing astrology. And I find that that just really resonates in my Jupiter ascendant heart. A great analogy for signal based astrology is it's like a clock on the wall. The clock on the wall is not making it 3 p.m. today, but it's indicating or showing you that it is already three o'clock. So I like to use the signal based approach to astrology. When we have those two, we can then break it down into partial determinism and complete determinism. A great example of signal partial determinism is electional astrology. And electional astrology is a specific niche in astrology that deals with finding a specific date that is um, more prosperous and advantageous for you to start something. So for example, if you wanted to get married or move houses or start a business and you wanted it to be profitable or successful or prosperous to you in your life, you could go to an electional astrologer and the electional astrologer would say, if you start this project or get married or move houses on this specific day, this is what the outcome will be. And this can be very helpful in terms of finding a date that's gonna be more advantageous for you. Electional astrology, right? Partial determinism. This is a great way to kind of have a choice in the matter and to feel like you're more in control and also to kind of work in tandem with the cosmos to find that right time that's best for you. On the flip side, 
we have complete determinism, sinal complete determinism. The idea of complete determinism really stems around the idea that everything is divinely, perfectly timed. Everything. The hard stuff, the good stuff, the peak periods, the culmination points, the activating your life's work. All of this is divinely timed. And when you think about it, it can be very magical. It's magical because there's this certain poetry, this elegance to, we are a single drop in the ocean, but it is a purposeful drop. We are here with purpose. We are here with intention. We chose this life. We chose this time. We chose this set of experiences for our soul, not our ego, not our mind, not the shell of Helena or whoever it is that you are playing in this life. The soul, the higher self, that is what we are evolving. And we came here, our soul chose to come here for this time to have the specific events that are coming and we work with it. A perfect example of complete determinism are tarot cards. When you look at your tarot cards, right? And you see, ooh, that looks like marriage, that looks like success, whatever. The tarot cards are not causing you to get married. They're not causing a specific thing to happen to you, but rather, whether or not you looked at the tarot cards, it doesn't matter, the thing is gonna happen regardless. And so like tarot cards, you can use astrology as a tool to prepare and plan for your future, whether it's the good things or the bad things. And also it really allows you to surrender, to trust in life's divine timing. I really believe that what's for you will not go past you. What is meant for you in life will happen. And that is because of my love for Hellenistic astrology and zodiacal releasing and just this deep, deep belief and trust I feel for life. Um, but I have seen it time and time again, you know, people saying, oh, if I had taken that opportunity, if I hadn't missed out on that opportunity, my life would have changed for the better. And I, I should have gotten that. And it's like, yeah, maybe your ego would have liked that. But was it meant for you? Probably not. No, because if it was meant for you, it would have happened. To be very clear, yes, I do believe in this, but also I believe we have a choice in how we view life. We have a choice in whether we're gonna go to the gym today. We have a choice in whether or not we're gonna make ourselves that healthy veggie bowl. We always have a choice. Every day, we can choose those healthy habits. We can choose our perspective of how we view life. We can choose to be grateful or we can choose to complain. We always have a choice in everything in that sense. But, your intuition's also leading the way. So now I wanna bring in this idea of how our intuition and our internal compass, our natural impulses, are always in alignment with the divine timing of our life. They're always in alignment with our natal promise and our natal chart when it's activated and also our divine timing with what's going on in the cosmos. I wanna talk about this because the Stoic philosophers believed that external fate and internal fate are working together. They're working in harmony. And this is really about the idea that when you are listening to yourself, when you're following your natural impulses, when you're really relying on your internal compass and you're listening to yourself, that internal fate is going to meet the external fate, which is what's meant to happen for you in your life. A great example of this is the stoic analogy that they used about a cylinder on top of a hill. Basically, there's a cylinder on top of the hill and it's just sitting there. And then someone comes up the hill, sees the cylinder and pushes it down the hill. And when that cylinder is pushed, because it's cylindrical, it's a cylinder, right? It's meant to roll. The cylinder starts to roll down the hill. Now you could say, was that partial determinism or was that complete determinism? And the Stoics believed that it was both. How did the cylinder get there? Why was it perfectly in that shape that it allowed it to roll down the hill, right? So that's the external fate. The cylinder was on top of the hill. It would just happen to be there. The internal fate is the person decided to go up the hill because they were listening to themselves and said, I wanna go up the hill that day. And then they had the inclination, the impulse to push the cylinder down. That is external fate meets internal fate coming into alignment, coming into one. And that's what I believe as an astrologer. We always have a choice in our approach to life, but there's also something to be said about some things that are meant to be and the divine timing of this life. 
And now this kind of goes into the I idea of the philosophical implications of this topic. I started learning about zodiacal releasing one year ago, last September. And over the past year, I've gone through my own philosophical crisis. I've always believed that life is working with us, that life is working for us, not to us. I've always believed that, just my internal compass has always known this. But when I started learning about zodiacal releasing a year ago, and I looked at it in my own life, and I looked at my husband and our family and our friends, and then I looked at clients, and I looked at so many people's zodiacal releasing, it was a very stark reminder that the universe is on our side, and that we chose this, and that we came here with a purpose and a mission, and everything is perfectly timed for us, whether it's good or bad. And this now brings up the philosophical conundrum of what about the bad things, you know, uh, morally, moral responsibilities. Do we have a choice in that? And I absolutely, absolutely believe we do. I absolutely believe everything, we have the full responsibility to make moral, ethical choices. Um, but this really makes you rethink life and rethink your whole worldview, especially for those modern astrologers out there that are listening. Like this is really a, a shakeup. Astrocartography could be in the realm of partial determinism because it's like if you decide to move to a better location, it's like you're working with fate, you're working with the cosmos to make the best choice for yourself. But I also see it from the uh, complete determinism view because where you're meant to be is where you're supposed to be. If you go to a line out of choice, you were meant to be there anyway. You were meant to go to that line regardless. And so I really believe that intuitively, we already know everything. We don't need astrology. We don't need an astrocartography map. We don't need tarot. We don't need any of it. But we can use it if we want to kind of allow our mind, the mental <laughs> chatterbox, the ego, to fully make sense of what's going on in our lives, right? Because astrology gives us insight. It's a tool. It's a practical tool that you can use to kind of give you some insight and clarity as to what's going on in your life and what will be coming. But if you're already in alignment with yourself, if you already really are trusting your gut and trusting your impulses and really living in harmony with your intuition, none of the other stuff matters because life is happening for you. It's not happening to you, it's happening for you. And a lot of people might not really think this because, you know, what about bad things? You know, what about when bad things happen? Well, take your ego out for a second. Just pull it aside. Just put that aside for a second and really tap into here, the soul spirituality, the connection with the divine, the fact that we are all so universally connected, that we are all one and we are all freaking love energy, right? Maybe your soul wanted something. Maybe you didn't choose this. Maybe you didn't ask for this. Heck, maybe you don't even want this, but your soul did because what's happening to you was meant to happen to you regardless. There's no what if or regret or I wish I did this differently because what's happened already happened. And what happened, what will happen is going to happen regardless. And so the great way to use astrology is it's kind of like seeing a storm on the horizon. And it's like, oh, I see a storm coming in, right? It's like getting a weather report. Are you going to work with that energy? Are you going to use that energy? Are you going to kind of harness it? and kind of like alchemize it into something that's beneficial for you? Or are you gonna be like, oh no, it's gonna rain. Oh, now woe is me. When you work with transits, when you work in tandem with your zodiacal releasing, you can prepare for things. You can see things in the future and say, oh, that's coming. I should prepare for that now. Because let's say it's a bad transit. Let's say it's a bad transit to your sixth house of health or something, right? Which I've got coming up in my 40s. It's really bad. But let's just, let's just say that, right? I can look at this. I can look at my 40s and say, ooh, I'm, ner I'm nervous. I'm scared. Or I could say, okay, now that I know that that's coming on the horizon, I can prepare for that. I can live so fully now and kind of prepare and just know it's there. You know, I don't have to think about it. I don't have to have it in the background of my mind all the time. I don't, don't even have to think about it. But it's just, okay, that's on the horizon. That's coming up in my 40s. Okay, that's good to know. And a lot of the times when you see bad transits, it's often not as bad as you think it's gonna be. This happens 90% of the time with 
clients, astrologers, anyone who studies this stuff. You see a bad transit, you see it and you're like expecting the worst thing like death or like just something absolutely terrible to happen to you. And then it's like, oh yeah, it was bad, but not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. That's usually the case with transits <laughs> most of the time. I naturally am a very reactive person. I'm a very emotional person. That's who I am by nature. It's very clear in my chart. I've got a lot of fire, Mars, Leo energy, and um, this is just who I am. But I will say that Stoic philosophy and Hellenistic astrology has really allowed me to find peace in the sense of accepting what I can't control and ex accepting that what is meant and also it's helped me be a very neutral person when hard things happen when things happen that trigger me it's going back within it's finding that middle space that sense of neutrality of not being completely caught off guard and tossed and turned by the inevitable highs and lows of life but rather remaining steady and neutral and for me my passion and love for buddhism stoic philosophy and hellenistic astrology has all merged together to make me the person that I am today and to make me the person that I am right now. Because naturally I'm not like this. Naturally I am a very emotional person. And so by learning to surrender, to trust in life, oh, it's just, it's magical. The universe is magic and we're working with it. We're part of it. We are it, all of us, you and me, we are connected. We're all united and connected from a place of love and we are working with the cosmos and it's just if you think about it from that perspective you know when you if you get a little scared about determinism or complete determinism or zodiacal releasing when you can see you know things on the horizon i just hope that this video really inspires you to see the beauty in it the poetry in it the elegance to destiny the fact that we are a single drop in this big ocean but it is a purposeful drop. We chose this life, we chose to be here. We chose to, to be here at the specific time and we chose the timing of our life. And I hope that this gives you that sense of hope and faith and love and deep connection with yourself and with life because we're here on earth to have fun and we're here on earth to truly feel what it means to be fully connected, connected, connection. That's why we're here fun and love and connection and astrology is just a language that's helping us giving us a little insight into what's to come so that it's helping us really just little messengers just helping us our little human selves on this journey so anyway i hope you enjoyed this video if you'd like to book a zodiacal releasing with me <laughs> you can do so on my website shameless plug um but if you'd like to book a reading with me i will include the information down below i also have a few blog posts so if you don't want to book a reading with, with me if you don't want to spend the money totally fine but check out those blog posts because that way you can look up your own zodiacal releasing for free get some insight on it get some information on it it's just the basics it's a basic introduction but still very useful useful to have and I will also include a zodiacal releasing calculator down below so you can find all that information yourself foreshadowing periods loosening of the bonds culmination periods all of it I hope you like this video I've been wanting to make this for a long time you know this video could be an hour there's so much more I could share on this but I really just wanted to give you my personal opinion on astrology and um, the idea of how I've changed and how my views on life have changed since discovering this technique and it's really magical when you think about it. I'm sending you so much love. I hope you have a fabulous, magical day, and I'll see you next time here on my channel. Bye.